Welcome to another Foodie Friday. I really need to figure out a different name for that because I'm uploading this on a Tuesday. Um, anyway, <laughs> I am going to a one day a week, hopefully, upload schedule. Um, but I'm kind of batching them for several months at a time in different sort of genres. So you'll see a variety, but it might not be every week for a little bit yet. Anyways, what I am doing here is starting a batch of corn chowder. And I've looked at several recipes online. What I'm really going for is how my mother made it. So I have actually tried, I've made several, several batches of this now, and I think I pretty well have it down. And so I will tell you that she used water not broth. But anyway, <laughs> um, we are starting off with a diced onion, small, medium, or large, depending on your taste. This one was a uh, sort of medium sized. And then this is beef smoked sausage. I am sensitive to pork at this point. I don't know why guys, but anyway, um, the beef smoked sausage has a similar fr flavor profile, um, like as far as like saltiness and, and texture and all. So that is what I am using here. I know I have seen recipes with chicken and, and like other things just in chunks or whatever. I think mom actually probably either used leftovers if we had had ham so it wouldn't be like necessarily uniform pieces or she'd cut up a ham steak and use that. Now that that is all in there, I did turn this on. I think it automatically does 10 minutes on high when you hit the saute button. And that is what I did. Not technically necessary, but it does help kind of give the onions a little bit more flavor. Now, I am then going to dice up these potatoes. Obviously, make sure they are clean because they are going directly into the pot. And then you're basically going for relatively uniform chunks, just so that they cook in approximately the same amount of time. Now, I do use yellow potatoes because I have found that with the pressurizing, they hold up better than like a, say a russet or something. A lot of like regular baking potatoes, you would wind up with mashed potatoes. So not necessarily the greatest. We want some chunks, but we don't want, you know, a soup of potatoes, if <laughs> that makes sense. So I am just dicing these up. Now, obviously, mom did not make her corn chowder in an instant pot. I do need to pressurize the potatoes to kill off the lectins. If that is not an issue for you, feel free to make this on the stove in essentially the same way that I'm doing it. Um, it will just take a bit longer for everything to cook because... You might notice that this is a bit slower than what I would normally do these speeds at. And it's only at 2x. And this is only an 8 minute and 14 second video. And it's really that quick to make this. <laughs> now, um, obviously the Instant Pot is helping with that. If you have histamine issues, yes it is a can. Yes, it is going to be okay. Um, remember, I am generally under control. Um, the lectins in corn, again, it's being pressurized. I did drain the corn, by the way. It's whole kernel. You can use frozen. You might want to adjust how much liquid you put in. I'm not real sure. I couldn't find the bag of frozen corn that I bought specifically because people kept having issues with the fact that I do still use canned goods at some points. Um, 
And if you guys are new here, keep in mind that I was diagnosed with histamine intolerance in the fall of 2019. So I have been dealing with this for multiple years at this point. And by working on my root causes, I have actually been able to recover to a good degree so that I don't often have a whole lot of issues unless I'm just not paying any attention to what I'm eating. Now, I did use beef broth for this. I think the first batch I used water because I didn't have broth. The second I used chicken and this one I used beef. I have come to the conclusion that mom used water. So that's what I will be doing. And quite frankly, if you have histamine issues, I would highly suggest use whatever water you are able to drink. <laughs> Um, I say that because broth has been very finicky. Um, I do get my shopping done at Aldi's. They have some brands that I can use. They have some brands that I can't. Um, and it's just been trial or error. Quite frankly, if you absolutely have to have the flavor in the broth, probably your best bet would be to have some sort of dry powdered bouillon um, so that the histamine can't be developing in that. Um, but honestly, mom used water. I, I know for sure. <laughs> and it makes sense because I don't remember ever seeing broth in our pantry. Now, um, what you have been seeing me mix up obviously does not have a label. Um, it is arrowroot powder. Mom would have used cornstarch. I don't honestly use cornstarch for much of anything. <laughs> um, I don't know why that is. Arrowroot powder is a gluten-free thickener, and I don't have issues with it. And obviously, it won't be pressurized, so I don't have to worry about lectins or anything like that from the corn in the cornstarch. So I am just mixing that in. And what you saw me do, I used milk and made a slurry. So I got all the lumps out of it before pouring it in. And then I mixed it as I was pouring it so that it didn't get lumps. And then I am adding some um, additional milk. Honestly, it was probably a cup, um, give or take. And it's really that simple, guys probably a tablespoon of oregano. This easily could have gone in before I pressurized. Probably would have worked better. And then that is some pepper. And mix it up and it is good to go. So it really is that simple. The kids love it. They have been asking every single week. They like it so much. Supper's ready. <laughs>